It's 6 o'clock. This meeting is called to order. Charlie, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. We will begin, as always, with approval of the minutes of our previous work session and meeting. That would be the December 27, 2011 work session. I move to approve the minutes as written. Can we vote to approve these since we only have two of the members who were present at that meeting here? We cannot can't approve those, we have to table those until next week. Okay. All right, we won't approve minutes. Well, I withdraw my motion. <laughs> Announcements. The select board will meet on the following dates. Regular meetings at 6 p.m. on Monday, January 23rd, 2012, and February 13, 2012. Work review sessions prior to the regular meeting will start at 5 p.m. Budget work session will be held on Tuesday, January 17, 2012 at 5 p.m. And we have scheduled tentative as needed budget work sessions to be held on the following dates at 5 p.m. Thursday, January 19, Monday, January 23rd, Thursday, January 26th, and Monday, January 30th, 2012. The first budget public hearing will be held on Thursday, February 2nd, 2012 at 6 p.m. The second budget public hearing, if needed, <coughs> and the public hearing to read petitioned Warren articles will be held on Thursday, February 9, 2012 at 6 p.m. All of the above meetings will be held in the town hall unless otherwise posted. Weather observations for the month of December are available in the town hall. We still need a citizen to represent the town of Plymouth at Genesis Behavioral Health's um, board meetings. All town offices will be closed on Monday, January 16, 2012, in observance of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Citizens wishing to be listed on the selectmen's agenda should notify the town hall before 12 p.m. on the Friday before the scheduled meeting. And we have no... Yes. Did you say uh, January 26th? Is that January 25th? It is a misprint on the agenda. January 20th. Yes, sir. Okay. The, the meeting is on Thursday, January 26th. Yep. We have no <laughs> updates, no correspondence. And our first actual item here is under personnel, Chief Clogston, to introduce firefighter Marco Papio Mayo. And have I got that? Pronounce, pronounce correctly? Mayo. Mayo. Yes, um, as we all know, I'm one of our firefighters that's been affiliated with us for nine years took a, took a job down south near his hometown. Um, that opened up a position and then the last hiring process, we kept a list. Uh, Tapio was you know, our second pick from that round. He was obviously still interested. Um, he comes to us with um, a broad range background. He spent 12 years as a commercial airline pilot and for the last five years he's been in the fire service doing firefighting EMS work uh, for the town of Bridgewater where he was their uh, director of the EMS side of it. Um, he is currently in school to become a paramedic and if all goes right, which I think will, uh, he'll be a paramedic right around in October. October. So he fits well with our organization. He started his um, probationary um, week of ride-alongs to know the town, the community, you know, our, our equipment, getting checked off on that, and then he will be put on a ship. So, uh, I look forward to working for the town of Plymouth, um, and if things go the way I think they will, I'm gonna be here for a very long time. Welcome to Plymouth. Thank you very much. Welcome to Plymouth. Welcome. Yeah. This doesn't mean we're going to buy a fire retardant dropping plane, does it? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's up to the chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any questions? I don't have questions. No? Welcome, okay. welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thanks, Chief.
Alright, we have no visitors. I have no comments. Committee reports. Charlie. I've got a school board meeting this week. Uh, I was told they, they've settled with their administrative staff and they're going into arbitration with some teachers on the union negotiations. And this week they're going to have a meeting with the uh, inclusive discussion about that. So, that's it. I have nothing to report. Planning board met last Thursday. The, um, they, we've started to have some initial discussions on the master plan. Uh, we also talked about placing an article on the uh, town meeting for zoning change, minor housekeeping, on just kind of an old definition that's been hanging around for a while and really is not functional for the community now. Um, um, Paul from the Conservation Commission who sits on the planning board mentioned that some additional acreage had been put into conservation restriction on Texas Hill Road and provides a nice linkage between the Walter Newton property and the Plymouth Mountain property. Um, there was some discussion about floodplain regulations and looking at ordinances or regulations to sort of deal with that a little bit more effectively. And I think as I noted earlier, the next meeting uh, on January 19th has, I guess there's several either subdivisions or lot line adjustments coming up. All right. Thank you. And I have no committee reports. Um, moving on to unfinished business. We had um, brought before us last meeting the vending permit for Plymouth Ski and Sports, Daniel Macera. This was the parking space on Main Street that um, was sublet last fall and created some consternation in the town. Um, at the meeting on the 27th of December, we discussed it and this, you know, identified that this is the only parking spot in the town that is currently leased. Um, and it has been leased for a number of years at $500 a year, which is the amount that's set on the form that, um, that the town uses for um, vendor permits. But one of the things that we talked about doing is whether, or talked about is whether that amount should go up and also whether there should be any restrictions placed on Plymouth Ski and Sport should they decide to sublet the space, should it be required to come before the select board for approval before um, he, he's authorized to sublet. And we decided to table it at that time because we didn't have the full board he here. Um, Again, we don't, but I think we've got enough of us here to make a decision on that tonight. Well, I, I don't have any issues with the idea of so, uh, the, the parking, uh, if leasing the permit, or leasing the space. I, I think it should be leased for a specific reason, and I don't think there should be a sunlight clause. The rate um, seems kind of reasonable, but uh, and I, it might want, we might want to increase the rate just based on how much revenue we generate from two parking spaces. But that, that space, I've been told, has been used for years. It was originally, I guess, a, a taxi stop. That's where the cabs were. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't see any reason uh, why we shouldn't continue it. I'd like to see, at least for a year, I'd like to see the rate increase, and I'd like to see the sunlight clause dropped. We just don't have a sunlight clause. <clears throat> well, the the only issue with that is that he has sublet it to other kinds of businesses in the past, and there's not been an issue with it. He's had when because he doesn't need it for boat trailers during the winter months, and I think once that they've had um, people selling Christmas wreaths there, um, things that. Pumpkins. Pumpkins. Say, I think, yeah. yeah. I, that could be done by the board. I mean, he, you know, he could come in. I mean, I don't know why he needs it in the winter time under any circumstances. It's just I think he wants to keep that space. Uh, he he. It's a yearly um, permit that he gets for it. So. Well, <coughs> if, he, if he's got a sublet, 
Is there uh, language in there that addresses the subletting of the space specifically? No. Well, no, I don't think it doesn't say anything. It doesn't have any language. And does anybody know how long it's been $500? Oh, God. Any sense of that? 15 years? I've heard 14 years is what. So, yeah, that's, that's, so that it was substantially more expensive on an adjusted basis yeah. 10 or 15 years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe one way to approach the financial component of it is to lease it for the 500, re continue to lease it for the $500, but then if there's any um, sublets of it, that there be an additional charge for those. I mean, it, again, I mean, that could be on a seasonal basis, a quarterly basis, you know, depending upon kind of what the, the individual bringing forward the, the potential sublease both to. Um, Go ahead. The gentleman from Plymouth Ski and Sports into the board, if that's the ultimate decision. Has he tendered a payment yes. for next year's mm -hmm. lease? Yes. And we've taken that money. We've cashed the check, I We've acknowledged it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. We, we discussed that at the last meeting, didn't we? Uh, my feeling about this is um, we should leave it the way it is for this year because we've already, t you know, kind of given him a form and taken his money. Mm -hmm. We should talk about an increase to maybe six hundred dollars for next year, and we should require that any sublet be approved by the board. And that's something that we can put in the comments on on this applic on this permit. I mean, it, it can just it can be done. Very well, simply. Sort of modification to that. Is that the point? Is that the point? Is that the point? Yes. <laughs> now, what I said was something different from what you said, though. What did you I mean, I guess, I mean, I, I was saying that, you know, depending upon who we wanted to lease it to, I mean, maybe the person who approaches about a sublet, you know, may want it for two months or three months or four months, you know, kind of another. Oh, quarter right. or some, you know, chunk of time above and beyond, you know, sort of the normal kayak and canoe season where, you know, he's presently using the, the space. But his deal is, or has been, that he has it for the year. Right. right. And he doesn't use it the whole year unless well, he's sublessed for a yeah. portion of that. I'm sure that people yeah, just have been approaching. You have the right to sub it. Frankly, I think that the, if if it's going to be if there's going to be someone else using it, the town should give them permission and have a, a fee. I mean, I'll. I'll I think six hundred, five hundred is, is crazy. Yeah. Well, and it's also not not technically a lease. Mm -hmm that he could do a sublet. What he has is a license fee for a vendor in the designated spot on Main Street. Mm. Yeah, and the vendor should be very specific, him and... I mean, I've had people tell me if you want to lease it, then somebody can link pay a hundred dollars and when you put like the, the thing that was out there last year, hundred dollars a day, get a permit. Yeah, and this is a... a Main Street vendor who I guess had one of these at one time. Well, I suppose one way of dealing with it would be to say <coughs> we're going to give him a license just for the period of time during which he uses it, or maybe for six months. Yeah, does he need it for the whole year? Well, he doesn't use it for his business for right. the whole year. And it doesn't get used for any businesses for a, a chunk of the year, but he uses it for, well, any time, time that there's kayaking going on. October. Can I see the, this is uh, sort of the application that's being used? Mm -hmm. So it could be April 1 to Columbus Day weekend or something like yeah. that. I mean, it's a legitimate use for something like that. The alternative would be you have to go down to the boat ramp and that would require other issues. I mean, you'd, you'd be into the space down there. But uh, I think that we probably get more complicated than we need to be by 
putting that kind of a time limit on it. I mean, it seems to me if he's willing to lease it for the full year and pay $500 or even more, but 500 say, leave it that way for this year, if we put a provision on it that says any other use of it than your kayak trailer needs to be brought before the select board, and if he does that, then we can establish well that, what other... Yeah. We and any revenue for a sublet should go to the town, I think. Or at least some share of it or something like that. Yeah. It's, mm. I mean, I'll, I'll make a statement. I, I may be in the minority here. I had no problem with the Big Love truck. Um, it was it was great food. Um, but I but I there's sort of two issues that do stick with me a little bit. One is that in number 14 on the application, he talks about described business, and he says boat trailer. Well, boat trailer is not the Big Love truck. And the other issue is that, I mean, I think as Mike alluded to, no one other than the legislative body or the governing body have the right or ability to lease town property. I mean, everything kind of is going to come from one of those two bodies. Right. Um, so I think that, I mean, I question his ability to, to sublease it to anybody without coming to this board. And I, again, I think we can make that perfectly clear by simply stating that under comments yeah. on this on this form. I mean, I guess, I, I think if we were to say that, I might add that, you know, additional sub, either additional lease fees or sublet fees, you know, will be levied at the time of the request or something like that. I mean, again, I don't know whether it should be $50 or another hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or whatever it's we have any idea what a parking space generates and revenue or something. And so I was just gonna go on over instead of just picking a number out of the sky, I'm sure there was a formula used for me fifteen years ago. The formula was probably which I was gonna look at how much the two spaces cost in revenue on Main Street, how many days a week and fifteen weeks a year. That's probably what that space should be leased out there. Because uh, that's what's taking up. It's taking up two spaces on uh, Main Street. So if it was in two immediate parking spaces, how much revenue would mm -hmm. that bring into the town? Could, could either the police department or the finance yeah. office just kind of calculate a. That, that's probably a real quick. Rough number? Real quick point. Okay. Yeah. That, that would be helpful information. Yeah. I'm sure you just walk out there now and how many hours? Depending on me, hours to six o'clock, I believe. Is it six to six? Is it ten to twelve hours a day? Time to go and rate. Yeah. Are those spaces blocked off now? Yeah. Six to six. Well, I meant this time of year. Well, there's, like, there's a sign for it. It says vendor. It says vendor parking. Yeah. Right. So the, those spaces yeah, right. are. They don't get used during the month. Because technically he releases them. And I think I think the one thing the board in considering any sublet of that space should should consider is the fact that we we don't want things parked there, you know, in the middle of December when we're gonna have a snowstorm. I mean, you know, the boat trailer the rest of the time is sitting out there when there isn't any ongoing maintenance issues as far as the roadway, so I mean, that's just a consideration. Yeah. Well, and I, I, again, I think that we can add to the bottom of this where there's a space for it to say any use other than for the boat trailer <coughs> needs to be brought Come before the select board, and that prohibits any anything different from happening there. And if it's something, you know, a two-week pumpkin sale, it's probably not a big deal, but if it's, you know, snowmobile trailer, that's a big deal. So, I think we should uh, maybe before we do anything, we should find out what the revenue yeah. would be. If we could get that information, yeah. Mr. Wood. I think you're going about it the wrong way. That's a valuable cost, and like January first, you put something in the paper that says we would be accepting bids for. Leasing this lot, and these are the following things you can't do. 
Well, I, I think that we have never had a, we haven't had requests for permits to lease any other sp spaces on Main Street. This isn't the only one that we could lease. So, that's. Well, let's, I think we should, I think what we're going to do for John and everybody is find out what the revenue yeah. probably would be before we tackle this again. I mean, I was thinking maybe it would make sense to license it for the period during which he wants it and open up the spaces for the winter. Yeah. That's another possibility, yeah. I think. But we can use the um, revenue numbers to look to look at how well, we how should that be might charging work. for it. All right. So are we going to then table this again? I would move to table the pending receipt of the potential revenue numbers on those two spots. Sure. Okay. It's been moved by Mike, seconded by Charlie, that we table this business. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right, that is tabled. All right, next on the agenda is um, discussion of street lighting with Steve Whitman. Um, I'm going to hand off quickly to Dave Warman, who's actually going to talk about street lighting projects with the Energy Commission. All right. Uh, so my name is David Warman. I'm a member of the Public Energy Commission and the Municipal Street Light Committee. And just a little history from the Street Light Inventory Report. It was originally presented to the board at the regularly, regularly scheduled meeting in uh, November, November 14th. And at that time, the Board of Selectmen directed that the Town Safety Committee review the inventory and the recommendations of the Street Light Committee. And since then, it's been decided that to better publicize it and to attempt to increase public awareness and involvement, the uh, street light inventory report should be presented again at this meeting with the uh, safety committee in attendance uh, instead of at the, a safety committee meeting, which most likely wouldn't be uh, pu publicized hardly. So the uh, Plymouth Lighting Subcommittee was established by the Energy Commission in January 2011. The Lighting Committee is comprised of three members, myself, three members of the Energy Commission, myself, Steve Whitman, and Larry Mackley. And the ultimate goal of the streetlight survey was efficient, sufficient, safe, responsible municipal lighting and to conduct and obtain an accurate inventory of the Plymouth streetlights. Prior to the survey, there was no accurate inventory of Plymouth municipal lighting. As best we can determine, a lighting survey hadn't been conducted in Plymouth if ever, in many years. Um, and no inventory existed of the lights. So we worked with a co-op and they put together an inventory and we're working off that. Uh, mm -hmm. And we decided that the count was 249 street lights. And the criteria used in conducting the survey was one, safety, and that consisted of sufficient lighting in intersections a major public road, sufficient lighting in sidewalks with significant pedestrian traffic, significant lighting in dense pedestrian areas, sig sufficient lighting uh, at crosswalks. The energy conservation and efficiency was another criteria. Uh, it was removed unneeded lighting, remove redundant lighting, utilize efficient LED lighting, minimize light intrusion into residences and a intrusive blinding glare, and minimize light intrusion into the night sky. Uh, beginning January 1st, LED street lights will be and are now the default replacement fixture supplied by the co-op. And as existing fixtures fail, they will be replaced with LEDs at no cost. Uh, but considerable and immediate cost and energy savings associated with LEDs can be obtained when replacing high wattage, high pressure sodium fixtures with LEDs. 
uh, basically replacing like all the main street lights, those the 400 watt high pressure sodium lights, and replacing them results in a 39% annual savings per fixture. Uh, the majority of the town street lights are 70 watt high pressure sodium lights. Replacing them actually will result in a 20% increase in cost. Uh, the co-op is implementing a $470 high pressure sodium to LED conversion installation fee if we replace a fixture before failure. Uh, I think they're, they're considering failure as a ballast failure, and typically a ballast lasts, lasts in excess of 10 years. So with that fee and the 39% annual savings, if you convert those high, uh, high wattage fixtures, it, the payback period is 2.4 years. The committee recommendations are, the uh, recommends turning off 79 streetlights after we did the survey, that's what we came up with, uh, and replacing 18 high wattage main street lights with LEDs. Uh, doing a combination of those results in annual savings of, of approximately $16,000, not factoring in the conversion cost of $8,400 to convert those high pressures, the, the high wattage high pressure sodiums. Uh, at today's electric rates, the annual savings due to the conversion would, would save, just for the LEDs, would save $3,400 a year. Uh, the committee recommends, even if no lights are turned off, that those 18 fixtures be replaced as soon as possible, and you're going to save 39% right there. Uh, it's, it's instant savings. What's the replacement cost? To replace them before, it's $470 per okay. fixture. Yeah. And, how, and, you, and you say it takes 2.4 years to pay the $470 yeah. back, and, yeah. and 18 of them would cost us $9,400. Okay. Can you offset if, if any number of the 79 that you suggested be shut off? Mm -hmm. That would be a savings of 16000 So if any number of those you could be could be offset by the shutting off of some lights, some lights as well. So the six, I'm sorry, but the $16,000 savings number, that was yes. if all the recommended ones are shut off, yeah, exactly. the 18 are switched yeah. out, and how does the... The 3400s, um, just if you do the 18... High, no, no. Uh, how does the um, payback, how does the uh, expense of this, of the um, replacement of the bulbs work into that 16000 Did you say it is figured in no, or it's not? There's no cost for removal of the streetlights. It's, it's anything over five years. But he's asking about the high pressure sodiums. Yeah. Which have a two year payback. Well, that would, that's just the high, uh, high wattage fixtures. The regular, most of the street lights in town are 70 watt fixtures. And we're not recommending we place them with LEDs and then we place as they fail. And we're not we're recommending replacing them because if you, every one you place is going to result in an in increase in the annual uh, lighting bill by 20%. Just because they lower fixture cost into the uh, into the, to the monthly charge. Yeah, exactly. I noticed in your re report with yeah. recommendations about which lights be turned off, I noticed that a number of the lights that you're recommending be turned off are on residential streets. Have yeah. you conducted a survey of the residents of those streets to see yeah, what yeah. they're... I would ask that that be conducted by the committee before the yeah, board... We're hoping to implement some kind of public input, you know, period. Mm -hmm. Uh, quite a few of these lights, there's no houses around them. That was, you know, typical. The majority of the lights downtown and in the immediate residential areas are not affected. It's yeah. a, for the most part, it's in the outside outlying areas. You know, it it's really isn't in the residential area. Well, so I can go look at that specifically and determine which ones are and possibly do that. But it can, um, <coughs> The results of which lights should be turned off came from some guidance that we got from the two chiefs, which was basically to avoid turning off lights in the downtown, in the village area, in any of the adjacent neighborhoods where there's a lot of pedestrian traffic, especially with students in the, in the late at night. Yeah. But on the outskirts of those areas, that may also be residential like where I live, 
um, where there isn't heavy pedestrian traffic at night and there isn't really a rhyme or reason to where the street lights are, that those areas were probably places where lights could be removed. Uh, I we do input, we thought was important to work out with all of you because we don't feel necessarily that we're in a position to collect that kind of input. We want to have a format for it, so that's one of the reasons we're here tonight. Well, and I, I think that if there are certainly residents of some of those streets who might disagree with you as far as whether those lights are important or not, and I'm sure that we've probably got some people in town who would say we need more lights than we've got currently. I'm sure we would. So That's why we, we're hoping to establish some kind of process here where the public does have the feedback, you know, input and feedback. You know, I think that for people to not know where you're recommending that lights be turned off, that's going to be the first bit of information that needs to be out there so that people know whether lights on their streets are among those yeah. being recommended to be shut off. I mean, we had discussed, like, Bristol went around, and the, you know, we're, we're behind this as far as towns. If, if well, it was one of the things we, we looked at what other towns have done. And, like, Bristol went out and they uh, flagged basically every street light with a, wrapped something around the telephone pole of the lights that were being turned off. And again, it's, that's one of the issues is it's not turning the light off, it's physically removing it. So and in other once it's gone. It's typically come from the, select, from the select board. You know, there's a recommendation from the Energy Commission, here are the lights. There's a review by, by the uh, department heads, who we thought might be here tonight. And then there's some kind of a recommendation put forward by the board of selectmen for public comment. So, and then, I mean, the list we have is digital. It can be posted on the website. We put in the paper. We may, if we could do, to mark the, the light poles, as Dave said. And there's high, there's any number of ways that you think would work best, we can help with it. There's a high percentage of these lights, too, that whether a survey hadn't been done, there's a lot of redundancy in the lighting, too. I mean, there's lights out there downtown here that, I hate to say it, but it's, it's absurd that they're even there, but there's a light literally five feet away. But I can tell you that any time one of those lights go off, we get a call here at the town hall saying that the yeah. bulb is off I and mean, we need it them, back there's on. Light, there's lights out there that have been out since we being at, did the survey a year ago. You know, they're there's still not on. for a light on Highland Street. It's, you know, that's so the stuff like that that the town is paying for, uh, there's no reason for it. There's lights, there's issues that the Board of Selectmen should be able to direct. I mean, uh, you know, as far as certain lights out there that it's really the Board of Selectmen should be deciding. You know, there's stuff behind town there that, that are private parking lots that the, the town is paying the light, you know. But different, different items that are specific, you know. Yes. I, I need to clarify this, because I'm a private parking lot, we get an awful lot of calls on that. Are you talking about nine grams? Yeah. It's not a private parking lot. Town owns the runway through that parking lot, parking lot three floors through there. Yeah, and we're recommending that, uh, that those two lights be replaced by a street light. And then there's a gated guardrail lot that's being lit by the time pays for that. I don't know. You know, but that's, those are specific items that... That's also something we don't hit it with the towel. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, it's, but it's, are, yeah, it's certain items calls. that... Yeah. We can't make these calls. The energy no, we can't. Can. So it needs to be reviewed by not only the public, but hopefully the Board of Selectmen, uh, yep. you know, has... We just like. turned the 79 lights off and see what happens. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. Yeah. See, that, that would be great, but they won't just turn them off. They, they physically remove them. So if the more we do that, too, there'll be a cost to reinstall them if they want them back. Is, is there a way to turn those off, or do they just, are they either... They're physically wired. I mean, so the wires have to be disconnected. Yeah, yeah the cop doesn't want to so do that. So what they want to do is once they're there, they're going to unbolt it to and take the physical... Take so no experimenting. Yeah. Well, and I think that the idea of marking the light posts that are being considered for removal is a good one in offering the townspeople or the business owners the opportunity to provide us with feedback within a certain time frame. Um, I mean, I, I think that's a reasonable approach to take because it's a way to do it that if people are made aware of it and yeah. you say when you're going to have those lights marked, um, and we can set it. That's a good idea. Uh, you could put something in the paper that says, you know, certain poles that are, are under consideration to be removed, 
they're being marked in a certain way, identify what the marking is, and then maybe put the list also on the website and mention that in the article. And But I'm thinking that we don't really know how much feedback we're going to get, so um, I would think maybe we maybe we'll take Steve's first, or, or, or a neighborhood, you know, where there's like a few lights within some geographic area, maybe several, that was do one that of the, area. One of the questions where this has already been presented, and it was front page news back in November, was there any feedback from the public regarding yeah. that? Yes. They want more lights on. Was that? They want more lights on. Yeah. Well, you need to do, you know, we have to sit I mean, we <coughs> you know, this isn't just us doing this. This is a House Bill 585. New Hampshire will do a Lighting and Efficiency Act that we're using as a guideline of, you know. No, I, well, I don't think we're criticizing you in any way. No, he, he was just saying, this is yeah. what people say, and well, that's I what know. you run into, yeah. you know. I know that, do you have a map? We don't have no, a map. We have, map. map. we have just a work map that we have. We just have the physical inventory. A map that we could put it on the website. I wonder if the co-op could. It's, I mean, it's by, they could probably do that. We but it's by, right now, it's. They're listed by the street. Right. I, I find a way to bag the lights. And right. I think just visibly driving by and seeing a pole marked, versus not seeing that pole lit up at night, you're talking two different things. Sure. Seeing a blue ribbon on a pole, <coughs> actually shutting that way. That's not going to get you any response. Do you think you could actually put a, uh, you know, a bag over the I light? Don't know, and I don't know how much heat comes yeah, out of those uh, lights. I mean, they're a, in some of the truck of the views. They are uh, fully sensitive. <coughs> I wish it was reverse. I wish there was a way that we could. I mean, it would be great if we could send them out and remove some light bulbs. You know. Uh, I mean, that makes know. more sense to me to be able to experiment with it somehow if that was no. possible. The pounds are any <coughs> What's the that? That we've had trouble with, and that's only because of the parts and stuff like that. Or the wires themselves are short on the ground. We still get complaints about those lights that are not on. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you when we're done. You list one being on that should stay on, like Coming Seal Road and Route 3, that has been on in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And we get requests all, all the time that we own. There's, there's a physical problem that has to be taken care of in that location first. And in Bow knows because she's been here, whenever we have a light go out in the downtown village area, it's a nightmare. I'm sure there's quite a few of them, yeah. But again, the sun out there that have been on in the year, I know, behind the post office, nobody's <coughs> missed it. And that's costing us, the town, as taxpayers, 12 bucks a month. I mean, I think if some kind of a map, and I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if the co-op could generate some kind of a GPS I mean, we're talking know, map on individual this. Individual residences here we're concerned about for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. But I can be honest, I can say Parker Street and Phil Street, the residents have challenged those lights being turned on. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that public input, and obviously the, the list is. But I think those are easy ones because we can say, because you mentioned five lights off on Parker Street. Yeah, right. I forgot how many on Phil Street. What anybody yeah. knows where that is. I think some of these other areas people don't know. I mean, also, I mean they, they should be able to look, you're talking about individual residents who live on certain streets, they should be able to look at the, the inventory and, and it's listed by the street. It's kind of a cumbersome inventory, I have to say that. And I think that even though marking light poles f is not as effective as actually turning off the lights, at least it's a way for people to see yeah. this light could be gone. And I, I mean, it, it's not perfect, but it's better than asking people to sort through an inventory to see if this, the light that's right next to their house is going out or if it's one that's down the street from their house. Yeah. And as far as the department's not being here tonight, they already anticipate quite a problem with yeah. the lights being turned off. Yeah, I was hoping that they review the inventory specifically. They, they have, and they, yeah. they would rather the Energy Commission review the public. Do, do what? Re get an input from the public feedback. Oh, okay. Because right. they anticipate quite a problem. Yep. And what I mean, that's, we're just still in the, in the server. And I'm not basically. talking about the occasional one, like behind the pool store yep. or something like that. So yeah. one, one of my concerns, Paul, with us collecting the feedback is if it doesn't, if there are people that would like to see more lights on or more lights off, I mean, 
the, the way that we actually right, they were confronted. Right. Well, the way that we actually get that feedback, so it's a public record, mm -hmm. so it's not like we filtered it or any suspicion about what the energy committee did. Mm -hmm. We've worked on this for a year, to try to save the town sixteen thousand dollars, not because we want to take up our free time and going around looking at lights in the middle of the night. And again, our recommendation is even if no lights get shut off. Right. All of Main Street, all of those lights should be converted to LED for instant savings. Well, on, on behalf of the department heads, the same thing happened with the High Street signs. Right. They felt using the department heads to justify whether to put up High Street signs or not, ended up not getting the correct feedback from the public. By like having the department heads call the safety meetings and only the individuals that wanted it. Yeah, that was the recommendation of the board that the safety committee reviewed. Um, one thought on accepting public comment, we came up with a form, a basic form, um, that could be available on the website or on the, on the desk downstairs. It could be to go into like a mailbox here for the Energy Commission, but it would be paper form, someone have to actually physically write in, um, so there'd be a record of it. That's not I, would, a I would think, email or anything like that. You know, if, people, if a resident has an issue with it, the people at each would request that light stay on. Mr. Wood. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. How many lights are on roads that the college is, or streets that the college has taken over in that area? Did you do that area? No, we didn't. We just did Plymouth Town Lighting. That was one of the issues. None of those co town uh, college lights, we, were, we didn't survey them at all. Do you know if we're paying for that or are they paying for that? No, we're not. Like the the like high street there, there's yeah. six of eight lights there that they they've they have their lights. They pay for all. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, you know, just what's from what I understand, what's on the inventory that's supplied by the co-op, that's the only <coughs> municipal lighting. Yeah, my understanding is even the lights that are on the college side of Main Street are paid for by the university and not by the town. Is that? But again, the specific items on here that are kind of no brainers that could be taken care of immediately. Uh, you know, if we review it, that really, again, I have residential areas and that kind of thing that could be addressed. So. I mean, I guess, I guess my thought was kind of in line with what you just indicated of, you know, when you have a problem like this or an issue like this and, you know, there's a call for public input and the question of how to get the public input and how to make it, how to manage it well, you know, when you boil it down, the easiest thing to do is going to be to pick sort of the lowest hanging fruit. And if those 18 fixtures can be replaced at a cost of $9,400 and the payback is 2.4 years, I, mean, I view that as being a pretty, pretty simple decision. Yeah. But then I guess sort of the other low-hanging fruit that I could envision would be, you know, identifying some of these repetitive, or not repetitive, but du duplicative lights, you know, where you've got two right next to each other. How they ended up there, I don't know. But you know, so some of those simple things, you know, maybe it could just be, you know, we review it and you know, I'd be happy to go around with Steve or somebody and spend a you know an hour on a Saturday looking at something and, you know, bring a report back to the board and say, look, you know, here's here's you know, there's you talk about seventy nine lights or it's gonna be two hundred forty nine lots. You know, if if only five percent of those or ten percent of those is our, our repetitive lights. You know, we can cut off twenty-four without even. You know. I don't think it's that high. I'm just going to ask how many are we done? Do you remember from the? As far as how many redundant? I think it was a half. A yeah, day. it's not. It's not very many. So, but still, yeah. but still, I mean, you know, it's making incremental well, steps. Yeah. You know, but I think you know, sort of combining maybe those six or seven that are redundant with this eighteen would be a positive first step. Yeah. I think it would be interesting to pick a street or a, a few lights someplace and say, you know, we're looking at those and see what kind of reaction we get. I mean, there are, are there are there five on Parker Street? I think three. I mean, it would three. be nice to know what with public feedback we have already. You know, and again, you would think if there's a light in some front of somebody's house that we've got, you know, scheduled to well not scheduled but planning to shut off. Yeah, they should be able to say, I want that turn kept on, you know. You would think. It's been there, you know, these lights have been there for 50 years. I just think that if you ask everybody who abuts a light, if they would like it off, almost all of them would say no. 
that's my just because you know it doesn't really cost them anything it's no, sort of lights, like there's lights out there on side streets is one house and one street but to the town we're paying for that some of these you know as far, far security you're talking you might be about sort of motion detectors right yeah. I, I think it would be interesting to take um, I don't know how much heat I'm going to get from from my neighbors about this, but Parker Street or maybe um, Thurlow, and you know, say you know we'd like to turn these lights off, or you know announce it, I tag them, whatever we're going to do, and tell the people I don't know, and see what see what happens. It would be nice to get one small area first, I think, and see. Also, I would think something like Parker Street, Thurlow Street, Co-op probably has. The capabilities of shutting those off because they're screwing plates. They what? I think it's hard for them to shut off individual lights, but they probably could make Parker Street and the old street go dark. Oh. Well, there's lights that are going on, like at the corner of Thurlow and Parker, and there's a bad turn up on Thurlow with a ditch there, probably doing the garden drill. But, you know, there's certain lights we want that should be kept on, so as far as doing that, well, and even the example that you give of, you know, the, the, ho the single house on a street that's got a light in front of it, we've got as much of a responsibility to provide for the security of that single homeowner as we do for a street that has... I don't know, I mean, I live on a street that has no lights. <coughs> and then, but then is the rationale that anyone can request the town for the light for the house for the perceived security? I mean, we're not going to go down that road. No, that's true. Um, it seems like there's been interest the last meeting and this meeting in kind of this pilot idea um, is it possible that if we were to announce the people like in the Parker Street, Thurlow Street area, the list of lights and the locations, and if we could get a copy to make a simple map, is that something that there could be a mailing? They go to those residents? What's the best way to get that word out to the property members of those streets? how we handle Parker Street. Yep. So if we prepared some materials, could go out yep. as a mailing? Yep. I, I can't imagine anybody if it as there's a light out in front of your house and you might have to turn it off. It's going to I, don't know. I would say yes. My neighbor yeah, has I, know that. Yeah. I have I to say yes. We don't have no chatter. Well, there's no, chatter. no, because it's not town, but, uh, well, I guess that's why. They've just never been put there. Yeah. I mean, we would still have to pull the chatter, because like we learned with High Street, when we only pulled the people on High Street, yeah. the abutting neighborhoods that use yeah, you'd probably have to include it. So we have to go a few blocks, so that's what I've found nice. Yep. I think it's good you're going to get a little bit of everything. You're going to get different views. Some people definitely like having them on. And we've heard stories of people like having them on because they don't need to use the nightlight because the whole house is lit up. Mm -hmm. And then some of us <laughs> that could shine with everyone's bedroom window. We don't like it. Um, so. Yeah, however you want to proceed, and as long as there's some kind of agreement, I think, between the Energy Commission, some direction from the select board, that would be helpful to us. <coughs> we don't feel like we're out there on our own putting suggestions right. out right. in a format that you're not comfortable with. We want to make sure that the way we collect feedback is in a format that you're happy with. So we can how many how on. many lights are on Thurlow? Say so from Parker up. I don't know if you have, do you have any idea. Yeah, yeah, it's probably Ace, something like that. And then side streets, Carmel, any of those streets have lights? No. Carmel, no, Carmel doesn't. I know, I live in Oak Ridge, it doesn't. Right. It's just on Thurlow for the most part. But we have people on those streets who are asking for lights. Sure. And they would have a right to comment, as you're saying, Paul, if you want to include them in the mail. The, the inventory that you prepared goes through every light in town, st street by street, with your recommendation of what could be, what should be done with it. Is that in a spreadsheet that you could just extract a list of the lights that are recommended to be turned off, yep. or to be removed? Because oh, yeah, be yeah. if we could, if you could extract that list, that would be a little less cumbersome for people to look through. If we could get that list of proposed lights to be removed onto the website. And if you could bring that, the form that you've got, Steve, um, if we could get that onto the website as well that, some, that could be actually used even as something that people could download, have it there, and have it available as a paper copy in the town hall, I think we could get some pretty widespread feedback that way, and it would avoid the 
perception that the Energy Commission is right. in the middle of it. Um, you know, and then we could just establish a time frame for, for, for feedback. And then if we could, again, maybe do a, a very targeted um, inquiry at a, in a particular neighborhood just to, you know, get even a, a different kind of feel for specifically. Mm -hmm. But I, I think everybody whose lights could be impacted really needs to be able to give us mm -hmm. feedback on this. I'd, I'd like to say that knocking the poles is a good idea just because, you know, there's lights out there that aren't in residential areas and at least people will be able to see what, you know, the light that we're talking about shutting off uh, and then when they drive by at night they'd be able to check it out, you know, kind of thing. As opposed to just seeing it during the day. Right, or just seeing a list and people wondering where it is. Yeah, I think both of those things need to be done. So. All they hear, just to change the lighting, all they hear, can I ask them another question? Certainly, sir. The college has done a good job on identifying their crosswalks, and they've got those flashing things. <coughs> that when somebody's in there, it's flashing. Down here, that comes from the courthouse and goes across the main street, that's a terrible intersection. You can't see nothing. I was wondering if anybody could find out how much it would cost to put one of those there. This is a recommendation at the Rotary, too, the Rotary. Yeah, down by the Rotary is another place. I know it was mentioned at town meeting last year. It's, yeah. it's very dark. It's a town meeting. That what particular crosswalk is on them? Yeah. Which one are you talking about, John? I didn't right know. Right here, where you go down Court Street. Yeah. Right at that intersection. Oh, okay. Off Main Street to Court Street. Oh, all right. Because you're driving and you, in front of you look all open and somebody can leave the sidewalk over here and they're out in front of you before you get there. But if there was one there and That's one down where the railroad is, like the college. Mm hmm And at the hockey game the other night, when that crowd came out and all that traffic, and the people that were crossing would just push the button and that thing started flashing and makes you know somebody's in that crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Even though you, you couldn't really see them because of the lights Yeah, there. sure. Yeah, that, that's certainly something to look into. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> would you like us to proceed with preparing materials for both both of the um, ways of doing outreach that you just identified? Do we? The town-wide list and form, and I can run them by Paul, and then um, a specific letter and list for the Parker, Thurlow, Carmel area as a pilot. Yep. yep, I'm in favor of that. Charlie, do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Yes, yeah. Can I just, well, it's, I, I cut you off, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. I just want to make sure David's available. That's that? Well, that works, right? the, again, the only issue is if we're talking sh shutting lights off, the co-op's going to have an issue with that light crosses. Well, and it might be something that we'll just have to do by way of, um, if, if they can't do it, we'll have to do it by way of marking the, yeah. the poles. But I, I also agree that that's a, an effective idea, too, just coupled with the list on the Internet. What did you start to say? I, I was just going to sort of pose a question to the board of whether we want to consider including in the budget this year the $9,400 for these 18 fixtures downtown. I mean, to me, again, that seems like a simple thing. I mean, I know $9,400 is $9,400, but... And that's, that's one of the things, too, is what happens to the surplus plus and the streetlight budgets. I mean, right now, in the last couple of years, it's been $8,000 a year. $60,000 has been appropriated, mm -hmm. and only 52 or 50 or something has been spent. So there's money already there that probably went back in the general fund. I don't know what happens to that. Say, say that again? We don't yeah. expend our entire budget okay. for power every year. Okay. We haven't for a couple of years. It's been a few thousand under. So. Potentially, we don't have to add that 9400 to the budget in order to cover the cost of this. We I mean, right now, there's money there that's, the, the budget is, it's getting a street lights. And if we did it, then the excess money will be a little bit bigger. Yeah, 3400 bucks, just yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I think we should put that in put put that in the budget or the work plan in some fashion. That's well, that's something that we can talk about yeah. at our next when meeting. We talk yeah. about the budget at our next meeting. Yeah, 
that would be a good first step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you, thank you very much, Dave. Um, the only other thing I'll add from the Energy Commission, just as an update, is uh, Paul, we gave Paul today uh, overall on the report for the municipal building. Yeah. Um, and what we'd like to do is give you a chance to actually have a chance to look at that. And we'd like to bring Craig Hadger from the Energy Initiative to a future meeting, and he can just give you an overview. Yeah. And that I, I have a copy of that. Um, we will get it into our read file and make sure that it, all the board members have a chance to read it, but it is a pretty extensive report. So I think what we need to do is give you feedback once we've had a chance to look at it and um, let you know when it's a good time. That'd be great. Thanks, Jerry. Willing to come. Yeah. Spend a few minutes just going over with you as well. So just let us know. Great. That works. Thank you. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> all right. We are, have no need to act on the next agenda item. Um, is there any public comment on, what? on anything this evening? That's not a. Re we don't, we found out that we don't have oh, to do that. Okay. Yeah, this is public comment. Yes, sir. Have you been charging the lunch truck any money for parking down on town property? <coughs> The lunch truck. No, that's the same one, the taco. Oh. He's been, over on, he's been down on Green Street, is that right? And my understanding is that he does have a $50 mobile vendor license. Yes. So he has the license for that authorizes him to do that. There's a, there are two kinds of licenses that the town gives out for vendors, John. Um, one is a mobile vendor license or vendor on private property, and that's $50 for the year. Um, the $500 one is the one for a vendor who is actually using a designated spot on Main Street, and that spot is reserved just for them. But with the mobile vendor license, a vendor can park anywhere on Main Street as long as they're not violating the parking laws of the town. So well, he could come up here and find the post office or wherever he wants. That's, 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 that's the police out there. That's he couldn't obstruct pedestrians. It, would, he, he has to, it has to be a safe place for him to be. Yeah, well, it's safe down there. Yeah. And he has to feed the meter, I guess. Right, and he can't exceed the limit. You know, for instance, the meters, you can't even, you're not supposed to park there more than the two hours that you can get out of the mm -hmm. quarters that you put in. So, any other public comment? All right, do we have any non public business to conduct tonight, Mr. Freitas? Just one correspondence. One correspondence. All right, well, on that. Do I have a motion to go into a non-public session in accordance with RSA 91-A colon 3 comma 2 A through C for correspondence? So moved. Second. It's been moved by Dick, seconded by Mike, that we go into non-public. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.